Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating radial progress bars using the radial progress bar widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. Using this widget, you can showcase the progress of your projects, ideas, campaigns, and more. With the radial progress bar widget, you can create different looks and styles that will match your site perfectly. Adjust line thickness, color, animation speed, anything you like. You can also combine this widget with different elements like images, section titles, and more. You'll be able to pick how the active and inactive parts of the progress bar line will be styled, so you can make your progress bar, which is more like a progress circle, let's be honest, you can make it as attention-grabbing as you need to. Or you can opt for a more subtle, elegant design. It's all up to you. Alright, now let's see how we can make one of these for ourselves. In the back end, go to the Elementor sidebar and search for Radial Progress Bar. Now, all of these red widgets are part of key add-ons. They're in our signature color, so you can tell them apart from Elementor's widgets easy. Now, we have three options here, and the one you'll want to pick is Radial Progress Bar. We have separate videos for the other two progress bar types, if horizontal or vertical is the style you'd prefer to go with. Now, let's drag the widget over to the page. We can see right away it has some placeholder content, which we'll be customizing during the course of this video. And the first thing we can adjust is the percentage number. I'll set 25. Then we can pick the animation duration. This animation is what makes it seem like the bar is loading. The value is in milliseconds, so if you set something like a thousand, it's still going to look pretty snappy. If you'd like it to be even quicker, you can cut this down to 500. But I'm happy with the original speed, so I'll erase this. Then we can change the title using the title field. Give me a sec so I can type mine in. There we are. Below that, the text field lets us change the description that accompanies the title. You can remove it entirely, but I'll add some text anyway, as it'll make it easier to show some of the style options later on. Just a moment while I type it in. OK. The next set of options we have here are developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes, and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text and we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that covers the content tab. So let's move on to the style tab now and see what we have there. The first set of options are for the circle style and the second for the text style. So in circle style we have things like active line color. Our active line is this here in black. You can pick a new color for it using the slider or by adding a different hex code here. Since I know the hex code for my chosen color, I'll type it in now. OK. The next option is for the inactive line color. That's this gray line here. I'll change its hex code as well. It's quite similar to the active line color, but don't worry, there's a method to my madness. Following this, we have the active line thickness and the inactive line thickness. I'm going to use these to make both lines thicker. I'm using the same value for both, 36 but you can add differing values if you like. And with thicker lines, the colors I set are much more distinct. After this, we have the circle fill color. So that will let us fill in this space inside the lines. Again, I know which hex code I want to use, so I'll quickly add it. The color I picked will make my circle match my inactive line. Then the circle size option. This lets us adjust how large the circle will be. You can drag the slider to make the adjustment or type in a pixel value. Also, you can switch the value from pixels to percentages or m's. Alright, now we come to the text style options. The kind of things we have here is for one the option to change the title tag. So that one applies to this text here, the title. You can pick anything from h1 to h6 and there's even the p tag if that works for you. I'm happy with the default, so I'll leave it be. Then we have the title color. As the name suggests, this option lets us easily change the color of our title text to something new. Following this is the title typography. In here we can pick the font for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then we can change its size and this will overwrite the title tag settings we picked earlier. 
With the weight option, we can turn our title bold or use one of the number values to find unit's weight. OK. Then we have the text transform option, which we can use to make our title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the same as our default. And under style, we can make our title normal, which is the same as default, or turn it italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, as is our default. Then, with the line height, we can adjust the height of the line with our title text. It's in amps by default, but you can switch it to pixels. I don't think I need this now, so I'll just remove it. Following that, we have the letter spacing option. It gives us more space between letters. And that's it for the typography options. The next thing we have here is the title margin top. So that's for this space here, between the circle and the title text. I'll give it 40 pixels. OK. Then the text color option. This applies to the description text here. You can change its color the same way you would any other. Now the text typography options. These apply to the description text, but they are otherwise identical to the ones we saw for customizing the title. Since we've already covered what these options do, there's no need to go into them again. Next, we have the text margin top. It's in pixels by default, and I'll set 8 for it. There we go. Then the number color. So that applies to the percentage number. I'll set a new hex code for mine. The change is pretty subtle on my end, but when you're working for yourself, you can make it completely different. And our final option here is the number typography. So this is the same collection of options we've seen for the description text and the title. Since there's nothing new here, I'll only change the font size to 55 pixels to make it a touch smaller. And set a weight of 500 for my number. And that's it. Now, the last options tab, Advanced, has several useful options for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our Radial Progress Bar widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. OK, another thing I wanted to show you. If you need multiple progress bars and you're happy with the one you made, you can simply duplicate it. To do that, right-click on it and go to Duplicate. I'll make a few more now so you can see how they will look together, but I'll skip ahead with the video because we've already covered the process. And here we are now. My radial progress bars are all done. Don't forget that you can stylize these to have different looks within the group if you don't want to make them look the same as I did. It's up to you to see which of the possibilities offered by this plugin work best with the style and design of your site. Now, if we look back on the landing page, we can see the different things we can do with the Radial Progress Bar widget and the potential variations we can make using it. The options we covered can help you make progress bars like these. Here, for example, is the style and look I used to make my progress bars for this video. Or you can opt to make something with a completely different style and look. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making progress bars can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its radial progress bar widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!